point and click adventure fans, it's time to polish off that mouse of yours, turn out the lights, and get your detective hats on while you're at it. Why? Because I'm reviewing the 20th anniversary edition of Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. What do you know about voodoo? You know, it's crazy to think that it was 20 years ago when my 12-year-old self fired up my PC, booted into DOS, and installed Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, on my machine. I was already familiar with the concept of point-and-click adventure games, mostly due to the large catalog of them available from LucasArts, as well as other companies. But there was something different about Gabriel Knight, especially the cover. The cover came off a feeling of mystery, suspense, and macabre that other point-and-click adventure games just didn't seem to have back then. And I found out very quickly after playing it that those feelings were most certainly the case. Now after taking months and months to finish the game, I found myself playing it again and again just to make sure I found every single nook and cranny that the game had to offer. I could say that Gabriel Knight is probably one of my favorite adventure games ever. And now here we are, 20 years later, ready to experience it again with a modern look. Now, with any remake though, one has to wonder if any liberties will be taken with the original source material, and with that, potentially ruining the legacy of the original game. Is that the case here? Sins of the Fathers introduces us to Gabriel Knight, a struggling writer and owner of a rare bookstore based in New Orleans. Recently, a string of murders has occurred in the city with ritualistic similarities that matches those to be practiced in voodoo. Seeing an opportunity to reignite his book career and make some Stephen King money, he begins researching the murders, but suddenly becomes involved with something that will change his life forever. If he lives, that is. Players will accompany Gabriel Knight through New Orleans and slowly piece together the mystery of the voodoo murders by talking to many people, discovering clues, and flirting with women whenever possible. Mmm, baby, I love the way you move. Madam Dora lie winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hips. Yep, she wants me. Exploring the environment is as easy as placing your mouse over something, clicking, and then selecting how you would like to interact with that object. Dialogue is broken up into keywords and will often require the player to interact with these characters on more than one occasion as they discover more phrases from other characters. Remember, the old rule in games says, make sure you talk to everyone. Well, this certainly applies here. Visually, Gabriel Knight has mixed results. The backgrounds the player interacts with look like a beautiful painting in motion, and each separate section of the game have their own sense of design and character to it. The in-game characters seemingly lack the same treatment at times though, and sometimes glitch out of their astonishing backgrounds killing the mood. Thankfully, it's a minor occurrence. Gabriel's look has also been updated from the original game to match his look from the later games in the series for more consistency. The designers of the game did a really great job of taking the original visuals of a 20-year-old game and breathing new life into them, but not taking away any of the nostalgia from the original. Now, as much as I love the original release of Gabriel Knight, it has not stood the test of time graphically, and that sometimes makes it very hard to play. The remake gives me all the nostalgia I miss, and it's easy on the eyes, just like Molly Getty. What a player hears in an adventure game can really make or break the experience, especially when it's a game that previously has a history for a great soundscape. Thankfully, it's hard to go wrong when you have the original composer for the music working on the remake of the game. 
The music sounds just as good as it did in the original, with the addition of a few new tunes. The voice acting of the original game was fantastic and featured Tim Curry, Mark Hamill, Michael Dorn, and many others, so fans of the game were quite worried when it was announced that new talent would be doing the voices for the remake. Playing through the game though myself, the majority of the new actors nail their characters and sound just as good as they did in the original. That can't always be said for some of the minor characters you'll meet in the game though, as the voice and face sometimes just do not match up at all. Jane Jensen was the creator of the original Gabriel Knight, so it's awesome to see that she is behind the helm of the remake. With that being said, some portions of the game have been moved around for seemingly better plot flow. Some of the more tedious sections have also been removed and updated with new puzzles and cutscenes that add to the creepiness factor of the game. In my opinion, this update to the original Gabriel Knight is well worth playing for both fans of the original and newcomers alike. I really appreciated the balance that the studio used to keep things nostalgic, but fresh as well. This game is perfect if you want a psychological murder mystery to play on Halloween, or anytime you just like a little bit of a scare, actually. With a little luck, this remake will gain some major success, and with that, we could hopefully see a re-release of the other Gabriel Knight games. Or, even better, maybe even Gabriel Knight 4. Let's hope so. Thanks for watching.